name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to, to whom, whom all hearts are open, open all, all desires, desires known, and, and from, from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, hear the prayers of those who seek your peace. The eyes of all look to you, O God, to give food in due season. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You open your hands and fill every living thing. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Through your generosity have we all received grace upon grace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you feed your people and strengthen them in holiness. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood 
that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from Exodus, chapter 24, verses 3 to 8. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up twelve pillars corresponding to the twelve tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed oxen as offerings of well-being to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he dashed against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people, and said, See the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. For the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
The second reading is taken from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, beginning at the 15th verse. I speak as to sensible people, judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body Christ. Because there is one bread, we, who are many, are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. 
he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord 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 Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. name of God, the Trinity of love. Amen. We live in a society that celebrates the body. Smooth, sleek, sexy young bodies mostly. Not mature and sumptuously curved bodies like most of those here. Not wrinkled old bodies, not spotty or ill-formed or diseased bodies. No, our society on the whole celebrates idealized, touched up, youthful bodies, although very few young people themselves meet the ideal. Christians often complain about this managing to hold much of it more or less at arm's length. No calendar girl offerings from the Mother's Union in the Anglican Church, at least. We know our value, our worth is valued in radically different ways. Our worth is not something that we possess or we've achieved or can flaunt on our bodies or because of our bodies, but is known as a gift to us, such that our desiring for beauty and acceptance and status is more a sign of our brokenness and incompleteness than of any interior or exterior perfection. And where are most people going to go anyway? when our bodily beauty or age doesn't conform to that advertising ideal? Are we going to believe them that we're actually not so lovable or worthwhile just because we don't look like George Clooney or Elle McPherson? Yet the ironic thing is, while we stand against the world's worshipping of the body, in another sense, the body holds a central place in our tradition. We celebrate and honour Christ's body as a start, a body like our own, born the same way, growing up physically through the same developmental stages as us a body that undergoes death like ours. And we celebrate things to do with the enfleshed body of Christ, not just his birth, but his conception, his ascension, his transfiguration. Even his circumcision is a feast day for some. And we cherish sacraments that affirm God's presence in our bodily life, in our births and in our dyings, in our weddings and in our baptisms. 
So within our tradition, we hold as central to our faith the belief in God of the incarnation, the story of how God came to us in human flesh in Jesus Christ. And in this, we affirm God's presence with us in creation, how God chooses to take human form and thus honours it and values it, and thereby honours and values the whole created order. And that honouring, that valuing, is an ongoing reality for us, as in this meal of simple bread and wine, we celebrate Christ God as still present and accessible remembered in the community of those who gathered, whom we recognize as his body, the body of Christ. Yes, our meal takes us back to the words and drama of Jesus at the Last Supper, but it makes him present. It reenacts the drama of the incarnation as God once again indwells in human flesh, our shared flesh, just as he shared his life with others, poured himself out for others. What is ordinary is again transformed by God's coming to us. In the words of St. Paul, we become the body of Christ as his life becomes our life. We are transformed by God in us just as much as any bread or wine. As this body, we celebrate the radical union that each one of us has with Christ and through him with each other. Though we are many, we are one body in Christ, and individually parts of one another, St. Paul says. And we are this one body, for we all share in the one bread, in Christ, as we proclaim at each Eucharist. So despite what I said at the beginning, one of those lovely things that comes to you as you grow older is how our youthful obsession with the beautiful and the adorable ones falls aside for a much broader celebration of the body, the beauty of our frail yet precious humanity, the value we find in life lived with parents and grandparents and our children and our long-term friends, the importance of poets and writers and painters and philosophers and thinkers and people of courage and conviction, of holy women and men who together make up and have contributed to our idea of what it means to be human. A beauty well beyond the superficiality of pretty looks alone, however delightful they are may be. And as we age, the body of Christ we celebrate is not just limited to, doesn't just consist of the living, the present ones. In our being the body of Christ, we enter into something like a timeless zone, something not bound by the limitations of time and space. No, we're with the angels and the archangels and all the company of heaven. In Christ, we're united with all who share the Eucharist, the presence of Christ, in any place and at any time, united with Christ's people, both living and the dead. We together all of us are the body of Christ. 
having just traveled through Pentecost and Trinity Sunday, we are reminded that the Spirit of God is still at work in us, that we are God's creation. We have been made in the image of God. We are the body of Christ. Our bodies are frail. Some here are frailer than others. They don't always do what we want them to do. They don't always work like they used to. Our bodies are often wounded and none of, none of us now are going to end up as cover girls or cover boys on glossy magazines or in ads on TV, except perhaps for Bupa. But however we may look, whatever surface appearances may seem to suggest, our true worth is found elsewhere. We are the body of Christ. We are Christ's human body now. He has no other hands than ours. And as with him, whatever shape or size, however that body is disfigured or degraded or damaged, as a child, as children of God's making, we are still no less loved by the Father. For while of this earth, ours is also a heavenly body. That is our worth. That is where our beauty lies. And what a beautiful thing that heavenly body can be. In the name of God, the Trinity of love. Amen. Let us stand and affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and, earth, and earth, of all, all that, that is seen, seen and unseen. unseen. We, believe we believe in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only, only Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, Father God, God from God, God light from light, light true, true God from true God. God begotten, begotten not, not made, of one being with the Father, through, through him all things were made. made. For, for us and for our, our salvation, salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our, for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He, he suffered death and was buried. buried. On, On the third day he rose again, in accordance, accordance with the, with the scriptures. scriptures. He, he ascended, ascended into, into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and, and his kingdom will have no end. We, we believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who, with the Father and the Son, is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken, spoken through, through the prophets. We believe, we believe in one holy, Catholic, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Dear sister and brothers, fed by the world of life 
and longing to break bread with the Lord. Let us pray for all who hunger in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for the whole of creation, reconciled in the body of Christ, that everything in heaven and on earth be one in his peace. In faith we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. We pray for the body of Christ, that is the church, that we may proclaim his saving death in faith until he comes again. In faith we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. We pray for all who serve as a minister at this Eucharist, that they may be faithful stewards of mystery of love that fits our hearts and minds. In faith, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. We pray for the wealthy and well-fed, that they will share their resources freely to ease the global food crisis. In faith, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the reform of Australia refuge policy and practices that our elected leaders may collaborate with neighboring nations to meet this challenge together. In faith, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the homeless and those in poor housing as winter set in, that the local community, welfare agencies, and all levels of government may combine to provide them with proper shelter. In faith, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all seafarers. The World Seafarers Day this week may highlight the service they give and help deliver them safe and just working conditions. In faith, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our parish community that our care for others may be shown in generous giving for the needs of the poor. In faith, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray that as we remember the night of Christ's Last Supper with his friends, we never forget those who suffer through fear, pain or distress, illness or addiction. In our community of faith, remember at this time, Jillian, Daryl, Josie, Christy, James, and family. In faith, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the recently deceased and for those whose anniversary of death occurs around this time, Dick Galbraith, George Howard, Marilyn Tyler, Arta Kidder, Anne Rose, Kathleen Blackham, and Alice Galbraith that they may be welcome to the heavenly banquet to feast with your saints forever. In faith, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of all good gift, you bless us with the bread of life and cup of eternal salvations. Set us free for life of self-sacrificing love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 We are the body of Christ, and in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. God, our sustainer, receive the gifts we bring before you and feed us continually with that bread which satisfies all hunger. Your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is Christ. And now we give you thanks because, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And on the night before he suffered, sitting at table with his disciples, he instituted these holy mysteries that we redeemed by his death and restored to life by his resurrection might be partakers of his divine nature. In this great sacrament you feed your people and strengthen them in holiness so that throughout the world the human family may be drawn together in one communion of love. We come to the foretaste of your heavenly banquet to be transformed by your grace and restored in the image and likeness of the risen Christ. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We to join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end, forever praising you and singing. Blessed is our brother Jesus, who on the night when he gave himself up for us, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. 
When supper was over, he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, This cup is God's new covenant sealed in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray, Lord, come now and pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. As we are bound together in this gesture of love, may we no longer be in bondage to the principalities and powers that enslave creation, but may know your liberating peace such as the world cannot give. Open our eyes to the needs of all. Inspire us with words and deeds to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Let your church be a living witness to justice and peace, to truth and freedom, that all people may be lifted up by the hope of a world made new through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honor and glory and love are yours forever and ever. Amen. May we come to your altar, O God, praying as our Saviour taught us. The risen Lord was recognized in the, by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Though we are many, we are one body. For, for we, we all, all share, share in the one bread. bread. Oh, uh -huh. 
Behold what you are. Become what you receive. The body of Christ, come. Holy things to the holy.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that holy things have taken. May the ears which have heard your word be deaf to clamour and dispute. May the tongues which have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of your life, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Holy God, we offer, we offer ourselves, ourselves to you as, as a living, living sacrifice, sacrifice through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Send us, Send us out, out in the power, in the power of, of your Spirit, spirit to, to live and, and work to your, your praise and, and glory. glory. Amen. here this morning, this rather cool morning. We turn the heaters on early, but I warn you, it's cold outside when you leave. So I think I'd encourage you to stay for a cup of tea this morning, just to get closer to the midday sun. 
refreshments in the Rutherford room to your left at the end of your uh, at the end of the service. Special welcome to those who are visiting. It's lovely to have you with us here. Please come and join us for some refreshments and talk to us about our various ministries in the parish. It's lovely to have you here. A um, couple of things coming up in the next uh, few weeks. You'll notice in the pew sheet. There's a wonderful uh, concert uh, coming up on the 10th of July, I think it is, on Sunday afternoon. Uh, some of the most beautiful music ever written and wonderfully played um, for your delight. So please look at that. You can book online or there will be tickets at the door. And I think, Paul, you want to mention something about uh, a concert, concert with some of our singers? Oh. <laughs> but, but we all have sung, most of us have sung it from before. This is advertising a concert. I hope you've all seen a card out the front. I left them there. Um, if you don't know, I work at St Paul's Cathedral in the city, and we currently, for the last couple of months, had a massive seven, by, seven metre diameter globe hanging up over the sanctuary. Um, and for it, it's, it, the idea of it is to promote climate change, but I'll talk about that more in the uh, morning tea if you'd like to come and speak to me. Um, Polyphonic Voices, which is a group that a lot of us have had relationships with. Um, are doing a concert there uh, because I'm part of the group and I'm part of the staff there. I'm going to be playing around for lights. We're going to have a borderline pitch black except for Gaia, the globe being illuminated. Um, it's going to be absolutely sensational. I don't like advertising my own concerts, but this is one where I make exception because it's going to be incredible. So pick up a card on the way out. All the details are there. Come and speak to me if you want. Paul, are you aware how many people have visited the cathedral to um, look at the Gaia X? Yeah, it's, it, it, our daily average during the pandemic was about 100. Our daily average at the moment is about 1,200. Um, we've capped off with hours of well over 1,000 people coming in. Most of Melbourne has seen it by now. If you haven't, it's really worth it, whether or not you care about the music. So, Thank you. <laughs> I uh, commend that to you as well. <laughs> Let us pray for God's blessing upon us all. May the Father who fed his children with manna in the wilderness strengthen you on your journey to the promised land. Amen. Amen. May the Son who gave his flesh for food and his blood for drink keep you in eternal life and raise you up at the last day. Amen. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth, help you live in peace and unity with all people. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.